It's a fascinating book because it tells a history that I knew bits and pieces of, but not this way, this comprehensively. One of the things, though, that you really talk about is the 2008 financial crisis, what we learned from it, and whether it could happen again. You sort of are cautionary that we shouldn't be too sanguine that we fixed it. Well, I think financial crises are endemic to the capitalist system. I think that uh, there's a fundamental problem uh, in the growth of, of uh, globalization and the uh, diversification of securities and the complication of securities. And in my book, I, I said actually when I left Lehman Brothers in 1989 that I didn't want my net worth or reputation based on people I barely knew trading securities I scarcely understood in time zones I never visited. And that rubric is consistent whether it's Jamie Dimon, whether it's the head of Wells Fargo, whether it's head of Goldman Sachs. Each of those leaders has to deal with that, with what I've just said. Which raises a, a profound question, at least for me, particularly the part uh, securities I can't understand. Uh, because these things are fiendishly complicated. I've talked to some people like you who've been titans of Wall Street who said, you know what, I don't understand the way some of these work. Has it become so complex now that both the people managing them in the banks, in the investment banks, and the merchant banks, and things like that, and the government, more importantly, just can't even understand them? Well, I can't understand them. I'm sure there are people who understand parts of them. And you, want, you, you do have that, and that creates some of the issues. For example, in the LIBOR scandal, there was a, one fellow who understood how to fix LIBOR, and he got the other people to fix LIBOR with him. For what benefit, I have no idea. I think it did help his bonus. But <laughs> fixing LIBOR, just think of it, it's like fixing the weather. Uh, so it's too, yes, of course senior managements can't understand everything they're doing. And you have some people in your book that you're pretty open about saying, I don't think they really were up to the job. But you have other people who are very capable. Jamie Dimon, let's pick on Best. Jamie Dimon, a really good banker, Best. really sophisticated, smart man, and he has the London Whale. How could that happen to a Jamie Dimon? It could happen because um, they had a number of criteria, risk-weighted assets, value at risk. They had four criteria at one point. The person running the, the London Whale changed the variables, changed the parameters 330 times in the first four months of 2012. He kept changing the goalposts, and he was reporting right up to senior management. They so, didn't catch it. So you grew up in New York, 50s, 60s, a different time. And I wonder today, now we see the phenomenon in Argentina with the surprise defeat, really resounding defeat of President Macri. And we see what that's done to the Argentine markets just today. Are the world, is the world much more connected, the financial world much more connected today that you have to take into account what's happening with Argentina and the peso in a way you didn't in the 1960s, for example, in New York? Well, we didn't, we didn't, we were very uh, egocentric in the 1960s and, and we worried about the United States. We, we stopped worrying about, uh, about Europe. We were worried about Russia. We used to take, uh, uh, you know, tests to hide under your hide under your uh, under your desk in, in the event of nuclear attack, uh, which was just extraordinary. That was Nelson Rockefeller, but we didn't have the connectivity. And very importantly, finance wasn't as important. Nobody really spent all their time worrying about finance. We didn't worry about markets abroad. Uh, Americans invested in America and the Europeans invested in America. We didn't have all these complications. 